faced with a crying baby, for many, the easiest solution can be to hand them an iPad and press play. But turns out, if that's happening before the age of one, quite a bit, it may not be so great for development. A study published by the Journal of the American Medical Association has found an association between more screen time exposure and delays in baby development. Everything from motor abilities to speech skills can be impacted. The research shows that one-year-olds exposed to more screen time experience these delays at age two and age four, meaning parents may not actually know how their baby's habits are affecting them until years later. For more on this, CBC Health columnist Dr. Melissa Lem joins us live. Dr. Lem, what is it that makes face-to-face -face interaction so important for babies, and why aren't educational shows, you know, not just the, the ones that aren't educational, but why aren't the ones where they're actually learning something an equal substitute? Anita, the science is really clear that babies learn best when they're playing actively and interacting with people in the real world. And unfortunately, screen time takes away from this important developmental time. Face-to-face -face interactions also teach babies a lot about communication and detecting emotion that educational shows and other screen time just can't give them. Research also tells us that young children who get too much screen time are at higher risk of being overweight, sleep deprived, and nearsighted. And even just having a TV on in the background can affect baby's ability to play and interact. And that's why, because of all this research, the Canadian Pediatric Society recommends that babies under two years old, other than video chats with family and friends, get zero routine screen time per week and per day. Wow, okay. And do we know if those kids who are exposed to a lot of screen time before one, do they eventually catch up to their peers? And if so, when? Well, the jury's kind of out on that because there aren't a lot of good longitudinal studies about this area. And it's also hard to tease out those early effects because kids who get a lot of screen time when they're babies tend to get more when they're older too. But in terms of long-term effects, we do know that there is research from Japan showing that when babies get more screen time, they have worse attention, memory, and school performance at nine years old. But on the flip side, if those same kids um, also get some outdoor time, a lot of nature time, then that blunts the, the negative effects of screen time by about 20%. So if your young ones are getting more screen time than you'd like, just be sure to give them a lot of outdoor time in nature too. At what age can children start spending more time on screens without those negative consequences to their development? Well, once they reach the age of two, kids do gain the ability to learn some things from screens, especially when it involves interaction and question and answer, like on Sesame Street, for example. But up until age five, there's still no better teacher than real life play and interaction, which is why in Canada, we recommend limiting screen time to no more uh, than an hour per day in kids ages two to five. At six and up, things get a bit more complicated. So it's important to, to talk with your family and come up with an overall family media plan. But overall, you you can tell that your older child might be getting too much screen time when they start to complain about being bored without their screens. They overreact when you set limits on, on their screen time or they start having problems with school or sleep, exercising or socializing. A lot of parents use screens to occupy their babies while out of the house or doing errands. Is there an alternative for a busy parent or a frustrated parent? Well, I mean, first of all, I do want to say as a parent myself, I get it. Screens can be useful sometimes to distract kids, like, for example, in my office during an ear exam or an immunization, but we don't want to make it into a regular habit. So in terms of things you can do for those really young ones, baby wearing, like in a sling or a carrier, it can help when you need your hands free to do something. Um, if you're home, you can set up a baby proofed area with some interesting toys in it and, and play music to buy yourself some time. And if you're on the go, and this is a trick I like to use on long trips, bringing a few different toys or books with you and giving them to your baby one at a time can also help. And just on that topic of busy parents, we should be trying to model healthy screen time ourselves. Um, research shows that when parents are distracted by their cell phones, that they're less responsive to their kids and they tend to overreact to their behavior. So good things happen with our own parenting when we put those screens away too. For sure, family physician and CBC Health columnist, Dr. Melissa Lem, thank you. Thanks, Anita.